just got turned solo outdoors. Today, our adventures take us a little closer to home. We're in downtown Boise, Idaho, and we're gonna be fishing the blue. Now, when you think fishing the blue, the blue is synonymous with BSU football and the famous blue turf down here. And while I'm talking about blue, I'm talking about the blue water, the deep holes out here in the Boise River. Now, it's early August, dog days of summer. It's supposed to be uh, 104 degrees out here. Most folks come down here, as you can see in the background, they're floating the river to stay cool, having a good time. But I like coming down here and the whole hopping down on the Boise River and catch a trout. It's a great way to stay cool, it's a good time, catch a bunch of fish. And uh, typically I just throw on my river shoes, some cargo shorts, something that I've got somewhere I can put some hooks and some sinkers and put a, you know, some night crawlers in the other pocket. And I come down here and just wade out in the river and whole hop. And you know, it's great because if you get to a spot and you're not catching a bunch of fish, if you're all set up, you got a pile of stuff there, you're kind of stuck. This method, you just get in the river and cruise down the next hole, cross the river if you want to, and just hit all these holes and you will catch a ton of trout. There's a ton of rainbows down here, fishing game regularly uh, stocks them. There's some native fishing here and there's some big browns if you get real lucky. Typically this method, you don't catch too many browns. You get one once in a while. They don't really eat worms. They want more of a fish presentation. Like they want to eat a minnow. They want, you know, bigger reward for the risk of going out and chasing down bait. So you're not going to catch too many of those, but there's always a chance. So uh, first of all, I'm just using my spinner rod set up here. This is seven foot light action rod, six and a half works great. And I'm using a eight pound four carbon line. And I like just using this, this P line. You can get it in almost any uh, tackle shop. And uh, as always, I put hyperlinks down in the video description below of everything I use in all my videos. So you can find it there and just order from Amazon. And uh, it makes it super easy. But uh, the hooks I use, I like these number six bait holder hooks. And the bait holder is very key because these bait holder hooks have uh, small barbs on the shank. So it keeps your bait on there. Well, one of the big things that I do down here is I like using these night crawlers and I thread them on straight on the hook and they leave a little tail. But I think it's key when you keep that bait straight, you don't really want it all glommed up on there and spinning in the water. Like you want it to seem more natural, like a grub that's floating down the river likely isn't gonna be balled up. It might be, but I really feel like that helps me catch a lot of fish when a lot of other folks are not. And then uh, just some like size five uh, split shot here. And uh, you can throw in some pliers in your, if you bring a little backpack or something like that. You know, I've used my teeth pretty much my entire life. It's probably not a very good idea biting on lead sinkers. But, uh, you know, bring these down. You can also use it for taking out hooks. But I'm also gonna show you, this is almost magic hooks. I'm gonna show you this technique <laughs> for uh, taking hooks out of fish that have swallowed the hook. Like, you don't need pliers. You don't even put your finger in there. You gotta wait and see this one. It's a good one. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna use some night crawlers. And then if you wanna get after them with some spinners, these are my go-tos right here. A blue fox and uh, this panther martin here. This is just a 764th blue fox, kind of small. And uh, you have a better chance of catching a brown down here as well, because those things, like I say, they're after something a little bit bigger, a little bit meatier. So uh, that can break up the monotony of just throwing worms or in case you run out of worms and you can throw some spinners and you don't want to go home yet. But uh, I think folks are going to enjoy this one. It's going to be a ton of fun. And uh, let's go fish the blue. Hey folks, I'm like midtown Boise down here. You wouldn't think it. You'd think I was in the bayou somewhere crossing this creek. This is actually a little tributary off the Boise River. This is one of my favorite spots to come down here and fish. There's a little tributary that comes through and there's an island out here like to hit up but this place is kind of cool you know don't miss the forest for the trees these places are super rad you know there's not a lot of fish in here a lot of little trout but don't be fooled like a spot like that can hold a big old brown but good luck getting them out uh, there's a ton of critters down here though a lot of ducks crawdads bullfrogs like <laughs> just a rad spot but uh let's head over and fish the blue over here
trick is, you gotta get your cast in before the floaters come by. It's a good fish. Every once in a while you get into a nice one here. I think I got a pretty good one. There's a bunch of moss right here, so I'm holding my rod up high. That's a pretty fish. <laughs> That's a nice one. You can always tell the hatcheries from the native fish here because the hatchery fish, their fins are all clipped up, tore up. We'll like, check this little dude out. White tip fins. Just a pretty little fish. Awesome old dude. Let's get him back in. Awesome. That dude ripped. Like, I actually thought that was a lot bigger fish than that. But that's all right. Hopefully he'll grow up. The big old pop and I'll catch him when he's four or five pounds. Man, this fish is just so much fun. There's no better way to stay cool on the Boise River fish in the blue. But you gotta get in the river when there's no floaters coming by. <laughs> you know these big rafts of guys and it's tough to like cast in between them. But it's it's funny because it's, it, it's such a misconception. People don't think they bite, but these fish don't care. They gotta eat and they just get used to the rafters coming by. And uh, and it's a ton of fun. Let's catch some more. He's a fish. Oh, let's see if we got a brown. <laughs> oh, he's my favorite. Check this little dude out, folks. Most catching rainbows down here. Every once in a while, you catch these little browns. Don't be fooled. Like, there's not just little ones in here. There's some giants in here. Like, there's some ten-pound fish hiding in these holes. But uh, that's just a rad little fish right there. So cool. I'm gonna get you back in the water. Folks, all these people floating by. I'm still catching fish. It's a nice Boys River rainbow right there. Check that out. <laughs> Look at all these people. Hey guys in the two, could you do me a huge favor and be a hero? There's a can right there. Yeah, you in the two. Could you grab that, please? Yeah. Thank you so much, hero. garbage. That's awesome. So that's why I like these bait holder hooks. If you look, you can see there's little barbs right on top of it. That helps keep your bait on there. So I'm putting my worm on here. I like to use like a third of a worm, sometimes a half. And you just thread that dude on there. Don't glom it on, just thread it. And then pull that extra clump over the end of the hook. And what you have is a worm threaded on there, so it's streamlined. You see his tail right there? 
I think that's what catches a lot of my fish. swallowed it. I'm just going to cut the line as close as I can. Hope that hook rests out. Good luck little dude. That's about the best chance if you pull that hook out of their stomach they'll never ever survive. At least they have a chance for it to rust out. Or you can eat them. <laughs> Way to stay cool folks float the river sit in the river all these people not one fishing pole in their hands such a travesty <laughs> Hey Alright folks, so I promised a magic trick and here it is. This is a little maneuver that my great grandfather taught me years and years ago and it's just a great way to remove a swallowed hook out of a fish's mouth without using any kind of tools and uh, as long as there's trees and branches uh, where you're fishing, this is going to work for you. So first and foremost, you need a stick. Now you can find a stick anywhere on the ground. It's best if it's a straight, rigid one that's not gonna break on you very easily. Uh, one of the main things about this is, this has to be able to fit in the fish's mouth easily. So I wanna say first and foremost, this is not for catch and release purposes only. So the Boise River is a, the fish down here, it's a renewable resource. They spawn on their own. Fishing game regularly stocks the river. so. It's fine to take a couple fish home and eat them. I think the limit's six here. There are some special regulations like over by the Park Center bridges. You always want to check on your uh, state regulations before you come down and catch these fish and retain them uh, just to be safe. But uh, this is my little maneuver. So when I catch a fish and swallow the hook and I'm going to keep it, which I like to keep a couple of pan prime when I come down here. Uh, primarily we're just doing catch and release on most of the fish and the bigger fish. Um, if I catch a big one, I'll actually snip the line off as close as I can to the hook and release them in hopes that that's just going to rust out. That's his best chance for survival. But when I'm going to keep them and they swallow the hook, which this dude is a prime candidate, first thing I do is bonk them over the head because it's not very humane to perform this on them when they're still alive. So I, uh, I usually conk them with a rock. So what you want to do 
is I got my trout right here. You see this line is able to uh, hold his weight easily. And you want to wrap that line around your fingers once. Don't let it get tangled up like I just about did. And take the stick and put it down his throat past the hook. Now you want to hold the line against the stick holding the weight of the fish and all you have to do is spin. It literally works 100% of the time. Way better than <laughs> Brian Fantana's Sex Panther. <laughs> It literally works every time. I think you ladies are going to love it. It works on catfish, bluegill, bass, you name it. As long as the line can support the weight of the fish, this method will work. I think you're going to love it. you got to try it. early. Come down here and hit up a real boat. It's a good one. Check that out folks. Nice fat Boise River rainbow right there. That's a good fish right here by the bridge down by BSU in the park. You know people jamming out down here playing music having a good old time. I'm still catching fish and everybody's staying cool. I really hope you folks enjoyed this video. If you did, I really appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It helps us out a lot. And as always, I put hyperlinks in the video description below for all the gear that I use so you can find it. Super easy. But uh, in the meantime, folks, you got to catch us all somewhere outdoors. Thanks for watching.